now i uh, request the first speaker dr saundarya over to saundarya please good evening everybody at the outset i would like to thank my mentor dr chandramohan sir and the olympus manufacturers for giving me this opportunity uh, i'll be first brushing through a few points in anatomy in relation to rirs and later on i'll be rolling a few slides regarding how to handle a flexible scope safely so why should you know your anatomy there can be a lot of permutations and combinations which uh, if you it is better if you have a road map before you venture in and coming to the anatomy fr from uh, starting from the urethra the urethral caliber is around 8 to 9 mm so mostly in adults it will not be a problem to negotiate the scope or the sheath and the urethral meatus is around 23 to 30 french but only in pediatric we may need to do some urethral dilatation that is meatal dilatation in adults it may not be a problem most of the times and we may have to negotiate the angles especially the bulbo urethral bulbo membranous angle and the prostato urethral angle which is the only issue while introducing a flexible scope or an access sheet we may have to encounter such high bladder necks especially in people above 50 years and uh, we may have to uh, the, these high bladder necks may have such uh, fish hook ureters which which will be difficult to negotiate and uh, this may cause buckling of the access sheath as shown here and uh, ultimately it may lead to damage of the sheath as well coming to the ureter orifice as we all know there are various types of ureter orifices stadium horseshoe and golf hole and as professor traxer has pointed out the one on the right side is the better one and the uh, ones which are round and very tight to ne uh, negotiate will be will not be of uh, good use to us the uh, the right side one which is slit like orifice uh, we can predict that we can complete the rirs successfully if we have this kind of an orifice at the uh, start of the surgery and uh, the diameter of the uh, dimensions the caliber of the ureter is around 4 to 5 mm uh, the, if we are able to pass a 6 by 7.5 french scope if without any difficulty uh, so it means the ureter is accommodable and if we are able to see the mucosal folds it is elastic and accommodable so we don't have any fear of introducing the access sheath the as we all know the ureter is a delicate structure it's a waterproof one because of the junctional complexes we should not damage the mucosa and the most important point to remember is that the uh, uh, just below the puj the, the ureter is thinnest and the uh, avulsions are most common here and uh, the perforations also occur more commonly in the upper ureter because of the thin uh, ureter and uh, the we should be mindful of the physiology constrictions at the upj crossing of the iliac vessels and the uvj the sampius classification we all know the the only issue is the difficulty in angulating to the inferior medial calyces or sometimes even the upper pole calyces can have can propose pose a difficulty while angulating the lower pole anatomy uh, the infundibular pelvic angle should be wide and the it, the infundibulum should be short and wide enough to accommodate the flexible ureteroscope there can be some special situations like this where the ureter is more tortuous we are, and if we are not able to negotiate the better idea is to uh, pass two guide wires if not come put a stent and come and try a percutaneous access the uh, anomalous situations the rare ones the ureters are highly inserted the uh, they, and they are anteriorly deviated you need real technical expertise to go about in these cases and for a duplicated system also the correct ureteric orifice should be identified and intubated and also if this is a cross fuse tectopia case which dr chandramohan sir will be dealing with he'll be talking about the anomalous kidneys uh, how to deal with the rirs go about rirs in these this uh, about the urinary diversions in patients with diversion if we are able to identify the orifice okay fine we are lucky if not one should always be well versed with the percutaneous access to avoid fear and the anti grade guide wire can help us in overcoming these situations the other one other option is to use a flexible cystoscopy or use an angle tip guide wire in a cobra catheter 
and in in such cases ureteroneocystostomy it's almost impossible to overcome the difficult angulations following reimplantations so as i said antigrade access or a percutaneous trocar or an application of a five french cobra catheter with the guide wire which is straight or angle tip will be of use in such situations so with this keep your basics strong have a road map follow the curves avoid surprises it's always better to have a proper idea with a preoperative imaging in the form of an i view or a ct with reconstruction 3d ct in case we are not able to get out of the situation with rirs we we should be having a better idea uh, to uh, overcome with percutaneous or laparoscopic access so uh, remember rgp works wonders to give a road map to the desired calyx now i'll go on to the second part of my talk that is how to handle a flexible scope safely the uh, with the techno with the advancements in technology we are losing uh, sorry uh, the cost it is a, uh, the cost effectiveness uh, the technological advancements come at the cost of in increasing fragility the this is the olympus p7 scope the angle of deflection is around 270 degrees upward and downward and the shaft size is around 7.9 french the working channel is around 3.5 french uh, the image quality with this fiber scope is almost as good as a digital one uh, and uh, i have borrowed the few slides from dr chandramohan sir during his visit to a uh, uh, research lab at a repair center of the olympus and uh, i was surprised to know that uh, this kind of severe damages occur to the rirs scope there is a flexible scope there can be corrosion of the shaft corrosion at the this is ha happened in the video scope where the video connector is fixed with the processor and uh, these are the corrosions which happen inside the control body and water droplets which go inside the scope connector can cause such corrosions and there can be severe dent in the shaft with manual forcing this is the repair center at hyderabad they also have major centers at uh, delhi kolkata mumbai and chennai so i'll be uh, briefing a few points about how to uh, about the normal movements of the scope and then i will uh, brief about the uh, how to avoid the damages this is the neutral position in which this flexible scope is held and these are the movements first is the forward and backward movement and uh, the next is the flexion and extension of the deflection lever which uh, gives us this deflection angle of 270 degrees up and down and uh, next is the internal and external rotation wherein the flexion and extension of the wrist helps you to achieve the internal and external rotation as you go from the lower calyx to the upper calyx and um, after passive deflection this is at, uh, used when uh, we are the uh, uh, deflection is not sufficient despite maximum deflection if we are not able to achieve the uh, or target that particular stone by pressing against the wall of the pelvic allicel system we gain some additional deflection angle that is what happens with the passive deflection so next finally is the fine micro movements which happen at the tip of the scope this usually happens when we are painting when we are doing painting technique for lasering of the stone next i'll uh, from the points that i have learned from seniors i'll brush upon a few techniques to uh, for a safe handling of the flexible scope right from placing the flexible scope on a trolley we should be careful not to place too many instruments which are heavy on the flexible scope so have an idea and place only minimum required instruments on the trolley avoid placing heavy instruments on the flexible scope and avoid bending of the scope like this the access sheets are many varieties are there and many many different sizes are there the commonly used ones are the 28 and 35 cm ones while inserting the access sheet these large prostheses can trouble you and also the bulbo urethral angle can trouble you by, by uh, causing buckling of the access sheet so to overcome this we have uh, designed novel technique of introducing this access sheet in us over a small ureteroscope that is a 4 by 6.51 there is a visual operator technique and uh, once the access sheet gets buckled it's better not to reuse avoid multiple uses and uh, to prevent the damage to the shaft 
Next is while introducing this scope over the access sheet, don't be in a hurry. This may cause such bends in the scope and uh, better to introduce in the straight position. And uh, while backloading the scope over a guide wire, it should be carefully done over a wet hydrophilic wire or a bi-wire. And uh, once we are in, the shaft tip junction should be beyond the access sheet so that we are able to achieve the full deflection angles. If not, like this case, the deflection angle will not be up to the mark and it may cause breakage of the scope if we are done we are doing it forcibly. And uh, as we go inside, when we cross the axis sheet, the moment we enter, if we are not able to see the lumen, better to withdraw the axis sheet rather than trying to bend the deflection lever. Pass a guide wire, withdraw the axis sheet and then gen gently try once you see the lumen. Next is, uh, this is a shafted junction, especially in pediatric cases where the length of the ureter is small, the axis sheet will reach the proximal ureter and our uh, shaft tip junction should be beyond. So we have to withdraw the access sheet. We should not be in a hurry to in too much excitement. We have seen the stone, okay, we can start bending. No, it's not like that. And with better to withdraw the access sheet. Next, avoid abnormal movements like extreme external or internal rotation, especially if the scope lever is deflected. Avoid such bending over the abdomen in an enthusiasm to reach the lower calyx we should not do such awkward movements and avoid extreme external or internal rotation. In this, the sto stone is seen in this point and we have done a maximum deflection, still we are not able to reach. So don't chase the stone, especially deep, medial, medial most, inferior most and anterior calyces, likewise can also happen in the upper calyx, can trouble you. If, the, if that happens with more uh, uh, extreme torque, it may cause breakage of the scope or a fiber optic bundle damage. Once some bundles are damaged, then the threshold is lowered and other bundles will be quickly damaged. So better avoid extreme torque. And avoid pushing the stone with the scope once you see the scope, uh, once you see the stone, especially when it is impacted. Avoid manual forcing of the scope inside the axis sheet. It may cause such dents in the shaft and sometimes this may get retained within the patient and because of the accordion-like effect and we may require open surgical extraction of the scope. And insertion of the laser fiber, it is mandatory to keep the tip of the scope straight. The lever, deflection lever should be in the neutral position. The cap should be open, frozen adequately and then the fiber should be gradually inserted, not in a too tight cap. And some also prefer using the ball tip fiber. Now, this is the deflection which normally happens with the flexible scope around 270 degree up and down. And uh, with the basket or the accessories, let us see how the deflection angles are lowered. The 2.2 French basket inside, not much difference is seen. And uh, 200 micron fiber, around 10 to 15% loss in the deflection angle is there. With the 360 micron fiber, even more loss, around 30 to 40% loss of the deflection angle is there, which we have to remember. And uh, once we are in, the laser fiber should project beyond the tip of the scope at least by three millimeters. And this is how it looks from the external point of view. Uh, if we are at this much distance, we are safe. And uh, avoid uh, high energy transmission in such awkward angles, preferable to relocate to the isocentric calyx, not always the upper calyx. And keep the laser standby laser fiber standby when not in use avoid repeated passage of accessories like multiple passage of laser fiber using basket multiple times to retrieve the fragments and all and once we are done while withdrawing the scope should not be in the deflected position straighten it and then withdraw and if we are facing any tightness better not to use too much force because some fragments may be stuck between the scope and the access sheet in such situations better remove the unit in total together and uh, uh, for regarding the high level disinfection, that is the 2.4% glutaraldehyde in 45 minutes or orthophthalaldehyde, whatever agent we use, the scope should be immersed completely in the uh, disinfectant, not halfway like this. All of us may not be affordable to the sterile, there is a plasma sterilizer, so this point should be remembered. And uh, leak tests between the users should be done 
and they should be add right between the users and no wet points should be there to avoid such corrosions which I have shown earlier. So to conclude, the laser fiber misfire and extreme deflection uh, angles which may cause extreme torque and fiber optic bundle damage and too rough handling of the deflection lever are the more common causes which uh, are easily preventable to maximize the longevity of the scope. And it's also important to choose the right case when you're beginning. Handle with care. Thank you. I thank uh, my seniors, Dr. Chandramoon sir and Dr. Ramakrishna sir for infusing all the knowledge to me. Thank you. Thank you everyone.